In this video, I'll be sharing some tips to help you pick your perks. There are so many perks in Dead by Daylight. The sheer number of them can make it difficult to determine which ones are actually useful. This brings us to our first tip, pick useful perks. A useful perk is one that answers yes to one or more of the following questions. Is the perk easy to activate? Can it be used in a variety of situations? And does it have a strong effect? One example of a very useful perk is Bond. It's easy to activate since it's completely passive, can be used in a variety of situations such as finding teammates who need healing or locating generators, and it has a strong effect since the information it provides directly impacts your decisions during a match. While a useful perk by itself will help you win your matches, what you really want to do is combine perks to create synergies. Perks that synergize will either increase each other's strength or compensate for each other's weaknesses. An example of a strength-based synergy is we'll make it in Botany Knowledge. These perks amplify each other's effects and grant a stacking healing speed increase after unhooking an ally. An example of a weakness-based synergy is Sprint Burst and Fixated. Sprint Burst has the weakness of activating immediately when you begin running, which means you'll need to walk if you want to keep it off cooldown. But Fixated helps make up for this weakness by increasing your walking speed. In addition to synergies with other perks, you can also combine items or offerings with your perks to enhance their effects. For example, equipping a map in the perk Inner Strength will allow you to find totems more easily so you can activate it whenever you need it. Another example would be burning a Shroud of Binding while equipping the Prove Yourself perk. This will spawn your teammates right next to you so they can benefit from the perk's repair speed increase. You do have to be careful though. Picking perks that focus too much on one aspect of the game can be risky if the killer you're facing has a power or perks that counter them so you'll need to choose between versatility and specialization. A versatile build might look something like this. An exhaustion perk to help in chases, a detection perk for situational awareness, a stealth perk to help you hide from the killer, and a utility perk to help your team. Having versatility in your build will ensure that no matter what killer you're facing, you'll always have at least one perk to help you survive. A specialized build will have higher synergy than a versatile build, but it may be countered by certain killers, perks, or playstyles. For example, Running a sabotage build can be effective against killers who use hooks, but ineffective against a killer like Pyramid Head who can simply teleport down survivors to his cages. With that in mind, you'll need to set your expectations before the match begins. Just because you equipped a certain build doesn't mean you're going to get a chance to use it. Many variables like the killer you're facing, the map you're on, and the behavior of your team can influence the odds that your perks will come into play. So if your build is only working for you once every five games, you may want to reevaluate your chosen perks. And finally, take into consideration what your favorite playstyle is. If you prefer the suspense of hiding from the killer, you'll probably want to equip some detection and stealth perks that you save one step ahead. Or if you prefer the adrenaline of the chase, you'll probably want some exhaustion and second chance perks to keep you in the game for as long as possible. It's perfectly fine to mix things up now and then, but don't be surprised if things don't go as smoothly using perks or playstyles that are outside your comfort zone. You don't have to be a one-trick pony though. You can always get better at anything with practice. But anyways, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe for future content.